Becoming a pro NFL running back isn't something you can apply for on LinkedIn. It takes a little bit of hard work, exposure, talent, and sometimes the right connections. Having someone in your family play in a league before you do is like having a cheat sheet to a test. Even though his dad made a name for the McCaffreys in the league, Christian was not favored just because of his bloodline. When did you know, like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it to the NFL? With the eighth pick in the 2017 NFL Draft. While I knew I was good, I always knew there was like another level and, and I'd never gone against that other level. So I used to go to those all-American, like the, you know, the FBU All-American games when I was in like the seventh and eighth grade. They, they thought I was the punter. They gave me like the, you know, the wrong, they spelled my name wrong on the jersey. And I just like, stuff like that mattered to me. And I just, it used to piss me off so much. The Carolina Panthers have selected. They would hype up these other backs, like these other guys, you know, like so much. And that was like the poster of their whole thing. I always had to prove myself everywhere I've been. Kristen McCaffrey. The coaches at those camps when Christian was in the eighth grade didn't know what type of monster they were creating. Being doubted only put a chip on his shoulder. I always felt like I had a chip on my shoulder and people were going to count me out and so I was going to do everything. And it is still there years later as he is in his seventh season in the NFL and has been scoring at a record setting pace so far this year. Tying the record! Yes he does! Touchdown! Earning himself the honor of being voted the top running back in the league through week eight. Christian leads the NFL with 652 rushing yards and nine rushing touchdowns and is the only running back from his draft class putting up numbers like that right now in the season. Hell, Leonard Fournette, the first running back off the board in 2017, just signed to the Bills practice squad. And that should tell you all you need to know about his career up until this point. <laughs> But these stats are why he's the last of an already dying breed. With teams slowly cutting back on the running game, it doesn't affect a player such as Christian, who can be used all over the offensive side of the ball. And I mean, anywhere. Flips back to McCaffrey, why not? Pump fakes. Now he lets one fly, and there's no one over there. Behind the line, looking to throw it. Airs it out, has Ayuk wide open. As he is also a big threat as a receiver with 292 receiving yards and four receiving touchdowns this year alone, being ranked second in the NFL with 944 yards from scrimmage. So how did a little small kid from Colorado become an absolute unit in the backfield and be one of the last greats to play his position? April 27th, 2017 is when Christian heard his name being called on draft night, but it wouldn't be his first time around an NFL locker room. I think as a kid, I remember playing Power Rangers in the locker room with, with Shannon Sharp and with Rob Smith and Trell Davis. Me and my brother, when we would go into the locker room, we would, we would see who could stick their head in the ice tub the longest. <laughs> Christian's dad, Ed McCaffrey, was the ultimate guide, playing 13 seasons for three different teams, finding most of his success in Denver, finishing his career with 565 receptions, 7,400 yards, and 55 touchdowns. Christian had the opportunity to be raised by someone who knew what it took to have a long career in the league, because we all know what the NFL stands for, not for long. And the training started as young as eight years old. You get grounded for real if you got jersey tackled. Like I'm talking yeah. like seven, eight years old. If you got jersey, you know, you wear the big jerseys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he, would, he would go to Home Depot and get double sided tape, tape our pads down with the double sided tape that you use to, you know, bring walls together. You know, they didn't have the Velcro and double side tape my pads. I never got you. I was running through everybody. No jersey tackles ever. Kind of janked, but. Looking back, I mean, that, that was the best thing ever. I, I never got jersey tackled. Growing up in a household of four boys, things got very competitive. When Max, the oldest of the brothers, began playing football at nine, Christian wanted to do the same, even though he was only seven. In his first Pee Wee game, he scored like six touchdowns, simply by just outrunning everyone. For years, Ed was clowned by his teammates and opponents for being slow and pale. But here was genetic proof of his swiftness passed down from him and his wife Lisa, who was a beast on a soccer field. High school is when things really started to shape up for Christian. His dad had him on a strict schedule though. I guess there are certain do's and don'ts when training to be great. Oh, sodas, bedtime 7.30. Oh yeah, like he would take, they would take our phone until I left for high school at like a time. When it came to foot, to sports and to school, it was, hey, if you want to, to be here, 
here are the things that you need to do. Like, Don't know if Christian was over exaggerating a little bit, but can you just imagine having a bedtime at 7.30 p.m. in high school? Depending on the time of the year and where you are in the world, the sun is still out at that time. But that strict lifestyle was for a reason. While at Valor Christian High School up in Colorado, McCaffrey was that three-sport athlete that just about every high school in America has. In the fall, he was on the field playing running back and wide receiver and even punted at times. On a varsity team during his playing career from 2010 to 2014, Christian set three different state records for total touchdowns, receiving touchdowns, and all-purpose yards. He was named Colorado's Gatorade Football Player of the Year twice for his junior and senior season. Handoff to McCaffrey. He's picking up speed. Oh, my! That's going to be a nine. It's unbelievable. 97-yard run. <laughs> During the winter months, he played varsity basketball, and once spring rolled around, he was working on his speed as a standout track athlete. Handling his business in the classroom, he posted a 3.6 GPA. Duke, Ohio State, Oregon, and UCLA made offers, but his dad sat him down and had a talk with him to let him know what he needed to do in order to make it to the league. I probably would have gone to Oregon, but then uh, I remember my dad sat me down and he, and he he went over all the academic stuff, and I understood that, but he was like, if you want to play in the NFL and like play big dog football, you got to run in a pro style offense. It is what it is. Cause no one's going to think that you can run in a pro style offense. Christian was like the king of all kings at Stanford, but his skills could have almost gone unnoticed because of a mistake that he made at the beginning of his sophomore year. My second year, I got the nod and our first game, we lose to Northwestern and I had a fumble in the game. And I just remember like, like, this is going to be an uphill battle for me. That was our first game. So we're 0 and 1, lost to unranked Northwestern at Northwestern, and you just don't know what's going to happen. He bounced back after that game, and in his record setting sophomore season, Christian averaged 144 yards per game with six yards per carry. In 2016, he averaged 146 per game on 6.3 yards per carry. Eight rushing touchdowns in 2015 turned into 13 a year later, and seven rushes for 30 plus yards jumped to 10. He surpassed Barry's NCAA record of 3,250 all purpose yards, finishing with 3,864. Christian ranked second in the nation with just over 2,000 rushing yards, becoming the first Stanford player to ever rush for 2,000 yards in a season. He also set numerous other Stanford records during that season, including rushing yards in a single game and all-purpose yards in a game. Those type of numbers should have won him the Heisman. But there was another dog over at Alabama. The last month of Christian's Stanford career is down in the books as his best numbers wise his last five game stretch the eighth through the 12th week of the season all wins was his most productive span in terms of rushing yards rushing touchdowns and yards per carry he accounted for just under 50 percent of stanford's touches over those two seasons and accumulated 573 total touches over that span both figures that led the nation that man never saw the sideline and that wouldn't be the last time he was used that much for a team Christian could outrun just about everybody on the field, but the one thing that he wasn't getting away from was the hate. Lacks desired size of an every down back. Doesn't have NFL caliber power to break tackles and create yardage for himself. Slow. Yeah, that's what it means, you're slow. <laughs> could get lost in the mix if he goes to a team is unwilling to be creative and tap into his versatile skill set. In 2016, not one white player was a featured runner on any of those 32 teams. And in the past 31 years, only two white running backs have rushed for at least a thousand yards in a season. But April 27, 2017, it was time for the league to see a change. Picked eighth overall, Christian became the first white tailback drafted in the first round since 1974. Joining Cam Newton in the backfield was a great fit for Christian. His stats and achievements in the Panthers uniform are lengthy and impressive. He spent his first year as a rookie slowly getting adjusted at the pro level. It was his second season where he just took off and proved that a white boy can ball out at the running back, receiver, and quarterback position all at once. Here is 
Christian McCaffrey. And McCaffrey spinning and out towards the 40. Swiss Army knife. He can do it all. On a Monday night game in 2018, he had 50 yards rushing, 50 yards receiving, and 50 yards passing all in the same game, joining Walter Payton as the only player in history to ever do that. In 2019, he was a two-time All-Pro, earning first-team honors at running back and flex positions. That year, he joined two other players as the only players in NFL history with a thousand rushing yards and a thousand receiving yards in the same season. He also didn't allow any jersey tackles, as that year he forced 26 missed tackles after the catch, being the most by any player that season. That's his worst nightmare, somebody to get jersey tackled. I guess he was a, a generation ahead. In 2021, he became the fastest player to reach 3,000 receiving yards and 3,000 rushing yards in NFL history in 57 career games. He has 11 career games with at least 10 receptions, the most by any running back in NFL history. Has five career games with at least 100 receiving yards, which is tied third most by a running back in NFL history. Since coming into the league in 2017, Christian has seen his usage rate go up each year. He's young, in great shape, and can withstand the beating that most running backs just can't endure. But being used that much may come along with some injury. And for Christian, it did which caused him to miss quite a few games in the 2020 and 21 season, leaving fans no other choice to think that his time in the NFL was done. Christian McCaffrey, RB1 in fantasy this year. No, sir. No? He's getting injured today. Sorry. Absolutely not. You don't think so? Jonathan Taylor. Second pick, who you taking? RB1 in fantasy this year. Oh, absolutely. You think he, so? Yeah, he's not getting hurt. Last year, two fluke non-contact injuries, not getting hurt this year, MVP. Derrick Henry. Let's just start run him 20 times a game because Mr. McCaffrey's knees, you know, we need the mechanics are pretty weak and you'll see. He's stretching himself out and he's, uh, you know. Different than De Deshaun though. Deshaun stretching himself out in a different kind of way. But Christian never complained. He was really a team player. He didn't really pay attention or respond to none of the hate. Well, except for this one time. Man, f your fantasy team, man. <laughs> <laughs> but just like anything in life, nothing lasts forever. Breaking news on this Thursday night as Christian McCaffrey is on the move. It's four picks all together to the Carolina Panthers in exchange for Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey is going to change the dynamic of what the 49ers can do, Skip. We know he can run the football. Tremendous hands, tremendous catching the ball out of the backfield. You can line him up out wide, you can put him in the slot. He has that kind of a skill set. The Panthers traded for Christian McCaffrey, traded the Christian Panthers. McCaffrey to the Niners. Dude, what was it like getting traded? Legit, it was you, wild, you're, you're, the friend, you're like the face of the Panthers. Like Me, I never thought I'd get traded. I thought I was a Panther forever. I'm like, I bought a house there, this is home. You know, I'm, I'm in practice and meetings Wednesday, treatment. Yeah. Practice and meetings Thursday, treatment. 11.30 p.m., I get a call, trading you to the Niners, yada, yada. I heard about the trade on Facebook, and I feel it's actually kind of a good move. They get rid of our best player? What do we do now? I mean, who do we watch now? I don't even know. I'm not too happy with this team right now, and I'm real frustrated. I'm just so disappointed and heartbroken that he's leaving us for the 49ers. Heartbroken. <laughs> he should have went a long time ago. He's, he's been too loyal. The Panthers haven't showed him the same respect. And just hope we get some really good picks with all the draft picks we got for him. They gave up a lot to get me, and I know that. And so, you know, it's not an extra pressure, but there's definitely a sense of urgency on my plate that I want to win. You know, I got traded. So, yeah, I got a chip on my shoulder. What's up, Niner Faithful? Christian McCaffrey here, just touched down. And I can't tell you how excited I am. Fired up. I can't wait to get to work. Christian did just that. He met back up with his old babysitter. Talking about going out to San Francisco, Mike Shanahan coached me. Kyle was the ball boy. Kyle is now coaching Christian. Kyle babysat Christian once. Well, really, it was Crystal, his sister, that did the babysitting. But And went to work, looking like a brand new healthy back in the league. Sometimes all you need is a little change of scenery to bring that dog back out. Once again, being used all over the offensive side of the ball, CMC has scored at least one touchdown in every game this season, extending his streak to a record-tying 17 straight games, including the playoffs. 
A total of 27 running backs were selected in the 2017 draft. Christian is at the top of the list as the most dominant today. But don't get me wrong, there are some absolute dogs from that class. But to put them side by side, it just isn't a match on productivity seven years later. Using the first six backs off the board in the 2017 draft, including Leonard Fournette, Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, Joe Mixon, Alvin Kamara, and Kareem Hunt, if I was to rank these guys by rushing yards and receiving yards, it would go something like this. Starting off with their rookie years, remember me saying Christian was getting adjusted to the league? He placed fourth on this list, with Kareem being at the top, with a total of 1,782 yards. Then moving on to their best year with the most rushing yards, Christian leads the group with the year that he ran 1,000 for 1,000, finishing off the year with 2,392 yards. And now for this season, he is still at the top of the list with 652 rushing yards, 9 rushing touchdowns, 292 receiving yards and 4 touchdowns for a total of 948 all-purpose yards. But if we move on to the career stats of these guys, he places second right under Alvin Kamara. But remember, there's still one thing Christian was able to record in the record books that these other guys don't have stats for. Through 83 career games, he went two for four with 84 passing yards and two touchdowns. If I was to compare McCaffrey to some older running backs that just dominated the league, he would be included in the names like Barry Sanders, Marshall Falk, and LT. Who are some players that you think Christian may be compared to? Let me know down in the comments. This just goes to say, no matter how your story starts out, it's up to you how the rest is told. If Christian listened to all the doubt and hate that he received dating back all the way to 8th and 9th grade and fell victim to it, he probably wouldn't be known as one of the best backs in the league today.